Alrighty guys, this is gonna be a fun one. Got some of the tools. Um, here we are at a project we've already done a lot of work for in the past. Everything is still looking fantastic. It's super hot up here though. It's like 93 degrees. We're in Woodland, California, up near Davis, Sacramento. Small job for my grandma, but this is gonna be a fun one. I'm gonna show you exactly how to lay pavers. It's gonna be a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's gonna be really cool. So you're gonna to wanna to watch all the way through. We're gonna give you step-by-step -step guidelines on how to lay pavers, how to do a pair of patio. Let's get to it. Alrighty, here we are. This is the existing concrete patio. So we're basically just gonna kind of follow this line right here. Just cut it right there. All this is getting ripped out. Gotta put a new little step in. Now these pillars are holding up this roof here. So we're not gonna actually get rid of the concrete route. We're just gonna cut around it. And then just put the pavers up to it. So super, super easy perfect small area to show you how to do it. This uh, concrete's been here for a while. That crack is pretty bad. 87 was when this concrete was laid. <laughs> Crazy. Alrighty, here we go. Another little voiceover. So, I kind of lied at the beginning of the movie. I messed up and did not videotape the whole thing so i'm going to kind of explain a little bit more than what's actually going to be shown uh but pavers doing your own patio it's pretty easy a great way to save money um, but it is pretty time consuming and very labor intensive so you know you want to make sure you have the right tools and it would be great to call for some help so if you have some family some friends um you know give them some cash, provide some food, whatever, but it definitely helps to have some help. It was just me on this one, so I was there about five days, and the demo of everything was what took the longest. I think I was basically prepping everything for about two out of the five days. Uh, <clears throat> you want to make sure that you have the right tools. That definitely saves saves yourself. Um, I rented a bobcat. Didn't necessarily need it. Um, I did use it, but uh, it definitely was a little bit harder since it was a tight access area with the poles and uh, the new grass. But as you can see, I did use it and I, it helped move the dirt. So I would recommend renting a uh, electric breaker. As you can see, uh, it definitely helps break up the concrete. You kind of want to, as seen previously, use it when you uh, insert it into the concrete. Also push down so it kind of pulls up the concrete. Uh, that was one thing I learned. It's just easier to pick it up uh, when you kind of pry it out of the ground. Uh, but fairly, uh, fairly easy. Just as you can see, it takes a lot of time and uh, concrete's heavy. So this is definitely where it's nice to have some people come in and help moving all that concrete. The minimum you want to do for a paver patio, walkway, anything like that is seven inches down from, you know, where you want the top of the pavers to be. Driveway is a little bit different. Uh, there's more weight, so you go down more. But it doesn't hurt to go down more, but the minimum seven inches. So you have four inches of base rock. You're going to have about three quarters to an inch of sand. And then you're going to have the pavers, which are about two inches. So... Anyway, the equipment I would recommend that really worked for me was, uh, as you can see, kind of just standing there. I'm using it right now. It's the electric breaker. Uh, and then a concrete or paver circular saw. That helps uh, cutting around the poles or definitely you're going to need that when you're cutting pavers. Um, no matter what you do, you're more than likely going to come across some area where you're going to need to cut. Um, the bobcat definitely was helpful. As you can see, I kind of used it to push all the uh, small pieces of concrete off to the side. You know, could have done that by hand, but it definitely saved a lot of time. <laughs> saved my back, saved my energy. And I also used it to dig up some of the dirt as well. Uh, 
and then I used it to fill up the wheelbarrow too, which was nice and I had the shovel it. So it was nice to have, not needed, but nice to have. And you're definitely gonna need a wheelbarrow and then some shovels, uh, a landscape rake. And then if you're doing a step, you're gonna need, you know, the, the silicone glue and the bull nose, which is basically a paver with a kind of curved round uh, smooth edge as you'll see in the pictures at the end uh but that's pretty much it for our borders we put our borders like any open borders like the ones that are going to go against the grass and concrete anything like borders up against a house or up against an existing concrete patio or concrete whatever we don't um, put anything we just push it up against it and then when we put the polymeric sand it helps hold everything together. You can still put it in concrete, but it's not needed. So the concrete pad, this one right here that we were doing was about four inches. So we had to go down an additional three inches in dirt. And uh, this was nice to have the uh, landscape break. Once you think you got it down, run some string lines. Basically, this is to see where the top of the pavers are gonna go. Use a tape measure, make sure you know you have the right depth. Remember, minimum seven inches, you can do more, but um, that's the minimum you need to do. And then I like to get a compactor also. The electric breaker compactor, they're about 200 or so a day. Not crazy expensive, but I like to compact over the existing soil. Nothing crazy, um, but it just kind of helps give a little bit more of a, a firmer foundation um, with not too much compaction so that the base rock can still kind of sink in a little bit. But once you got your uh, measurements done, you have the, the right one. I think we did a little more. I think it was like eight inches here. You start bringing the base rock in with the wheelbarrow. It's kind of a guessing game. You bring in as much as you think is needed. Get your big landscape rake. It's just like a very long metal rake. Smooth it out, and um, then you're going to wet it. You don't have to, but it's recommended to wet it because that way it just kind of helps everything compact that much more better compaction and uh yeah once that's done you just kind of like i'm doing here just follow whatever pattern you'd like compact the base rock and do the string line again make sure you get it exactly remember this one is kind of you want to make sure you know how much sand you're going to do in this case i think we did about one inch of sand so i needed to make sure that i had three inches of space so i didn't want to have too much because it's a lot easier to add a little bit more base rock and compact it than have to take it off so once you have you know what you need you want to go over it a couple of times and the sand is next so sand's pretty easy basically just some regular wash sand put it down and then we use the pipe the pipe is a three quarter inch pipe but with the outer edge it's about an inch so you lay it down on each side and make sure it's level Put the board across and make sure that the, you know, put a level on top of the board and make sure everything's level. That was one mistake I made here. I did not do that and I had to redo part of it. But you basically just screed the sand. So you can kind of see the pipe on the base. On the base rock, it's not totally setting level. So we had to kind of redo that. So it's important to make sure that way you don't have to go back and fix stuff. But yeah, you just basically screed the wash sand using any type of, this is just a regular dug fir two by four. And uh, once that's done, yeah, you just start laying the pavers. I like to run a string line on the very edge and do one layer of the pattern. And then you just follow whatever pattern you're gonna be doing. When you get to the gap of where the pipe was, you just fill it in with some sand and a little concrete trowel. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And uh, yeah, you just keep laying. I did not get any uh, timeless video, like I said, of me putting it in the border or really doing the steps, so I apologize. Uh, completely forgot. I had another project, uh, and I had to be leaving by a certain time, so I was a little uh, crunched on time for this project. So I actually ended up working up until like 8.30 at night a couple of days just to get it done on time. So I forgot to do the recording, but it's pretty simple for the border. Once you get your pattern you lay it out and then you measure this board is about nine inches in length we did a soldier pattern which is basically uh, the borders facing upright 
if you're going to be like um, facing basically vertical. If you're going to place them horizontal, it's called a sailor, as in like a boat. And uh, so, yeah, you just make sure you measure. And then I like to measure on each end. And then you make sure it's the nine inches on each end. And you just run a string line or a chalk line, snap it down. You know, you mark it, you get your uh, concrete paper saw, cut it, and then we do all of our bars, like I mentioned, in concrete. So you pour the the dry concrete powder, mix it up with a pick or whatever, wet it till it's the right consistency, and then you just use a sand or rubber mallet, just kind of hammer it and make sure it's nice and level, nice and tight. And then for the step, what we did is we used the same border pavers and just ran a circle. It was kind of a curved step. And then we, you can fill like the, it really depends. This one, we filled the whole step in with concrete. Um, the only problem with that, it's more stronger, but if anything happens, you know, you have, it takes a lot more effort to break it apart. So in the future, I would recommend for myself and for anyone watching that you just put the actual border of the step in concrete and then you fill it up with base rock compact it and then you lay your pavers down on top that way if anything happens you can just you know it's easier to fix but anyway once that's done you uh fill the polymeric sand wet it and you're good to go so here's some uh, after pictures of everything that i'll show you and uh i hope you enjoyed hope this video helps